Yo, what's going on guys? It's Julian Green coming at you with a brand new video for you guys and we're gonna try a little something different. Now usually you see me react to movies and review movies and trailers and things of that sort but today we're gonna be doing recaps to a, a TV show. And what better TV show to do this and start this whole thing with than Game of Thrones? That is right, Game of Thrones is here, winter is here, season 8 is the final season in the Game of Thrones saga, and that means we're going to get six episodes of just straight up madness. So we're going to be covering all six of those episodes each time after the episode airs, and then pretty much just go over everything. So with that being said, you guys do know that there are going to be spoilers. If you didn't know, there are going to be spoilers, lots of it. So if you haven't seen the episode, make sure you watch it, you come back, and then you watch this video as well. All right, so let's just dive right into it. So the first thing that we notice is that the opening is almost completely different. There's still some things that are pretty great, like the opening song, the da 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 but we also see the map that we've been getting for the last couple seasons. But the thing that is different is that we're getting new locations, and the color palette is almost completely different. So it's a really nice touch that this is going to be the last season, and they gave us something new in that opening sequence. So when we jump into the episode, it is very reminiscent of the pilot of Game of Thrones where the Lannisters first came in in Winterfell and then you have the young children like Arya and Bran trying to crane their necks and climb things just to get a look at the royal family that is coming in. But this time it is Jon and Daenerys who are coming in as the royal family, or soon to be royal family, however you think of it. And it is a new little kid who's pretty much climbing a bunch of things trying to get a look at them. So that was a nice little tweak and touch and a call back to the original season. But even in this thing alone, we see Arya sitting in the crowd and then she's kind of looking at a bunch of people she hasn't seen in a while. She sees Jon, who she hasn't seen since season one. She's looking at the Hound, who she hasn't seen since like season four. And then she's also looking at Gentry, who she hasn't seen since season two. So right off the bat, you get it. I, I was getting excited over like when she sees these people for the first time and what those interactions are going to be like. And this whole episode is just filled with reunions of people who haven't seen each other in years or in our case seasons. You have Tyrion and Sansa reuniting since the death of Joffrey and it's a very awkward reunion. And a little shade from Sansa at Tyrion saying how... How could he trust uh, Cersei when she says that she's going to help? We know she's not going to. So the fact that Tyrion thinks so, I think that Sansa was like pretty much voicing all of our opinions when she said, I thought you were the cleverest man alive. You get the reunion between Jon and Arya at the Tree of Wisdom. I don't know the tree, so if you guys let me know in the comments. But it's pretty much the reunion of Jon and Arya at the tree that all the Starks seem to sit at. And it's really nice seeing them get together. It warmed my heart like almost as much as it did when he and Sansa got together. But you know, these two had a better relationship than him and Sansa did. So this was actually probably more heartwarming to see those two kind of reunite. And speaking of meetings, you just pretty much have Daenerys getting introduced to the town of Winterfell and they do not like that chick at all including Sansa. Sansa and Daenerys have like pretty much that, like an icy stare off pretty much just throwing shade left and right. Fuck the shade they were throwing the tree. I even snapped my fingers when Sansa was like oh we didn't account to feed everybody uh what do dragons eat anyway and Daenerys looked at her and said whatever they want. I was like okay it's gonna be that type of show all right Game of Thrones I see you. I can't wait to see where this whole shade fest goes in the next couple of episodes. It's gonna be fun. The only one who does like her is Jon Snow who Everyone in Winterfell is not really liking him right now because, you know, he rescinded his name King of the North, but guys, you got to get with the program. White Walkers are coming. Speaking of which, while this whole reunion thing is going on when, like, all the Starks are being reunited, we want to see it. They wanted it to happen, but why is Bran just being a total weirdo just saying, like, yo, things are happening. Can we, like, cut this short? Like, bro, we know these these things are happening, but can you give us a moment? Like, we haven't seen each other in years. But back to John and Danny. They pretty much go on one of the best dates ever. And this is the first time that we all saw Jon riding a freaking dragon, okay? We all suspected he was going to ride a dragon, just not this early in the season. Probably we thought it was going to be safe for the season finale, but the fact that he wrote it in episode one, I hope every episode kind of ends with Jon riding a dragon at some point or another. And they're just kind of flying, and it becomes this really cute romantic gesture where they're just pretty, I mean, we can't do these type of romantic gestures, so I was kind of finding myself, like, living through them, like, huh, if I could take my wife on a dragon, that's what we do all day. That'd be every date night, all the time. And this kind of like further cements the relationship between Jon and Daenerys, which we all know is not going to end well. For reasons we'll get into a little bit later. At this point, we cut over to King's Landing, where Cersei is still giving her best bitchy face. Euron over here brings a whole new army called the Golden Company. They're just pretty much guys and 
gold suits or something like that. And Euron, Euron is like this guy who's like completely guided by his junk. That's you see you, you say that about most people, but he actually is guided by his junk. All he wants to do is pretty much f the queen, and f the queen he does. Now there's this really interesting exchange where he's telling her like, hey, we should do it, you know. But Cersei's kind of like brushing him off, and she's giving all these iconic captions that you would see on Instagram. At one point he says like, hey, when are we gonna do stuff? And she says, if you want a whore, buy one. If you want a queen, earn it. But he's like, hey, I gave you an army, I got you revenge, and I'm about to win you this throne once again. Like, what else do I have to do? And she lets him hit anyway. He was over here bossing it up and then you let him hit anyway? Beyonce, you are not. Now, did anybody else pick up something when like after they have done stuff and he says that he wants to put a prince in her belly? Like we know that Cersei is pregnant and she just kind of brushed it off, but I feel like that she is going to pretty much say, hey, I am pregnant with your baby just so she can not, you know, if she's planning to kill Jamie anyway, then I mean, that'd be a good plan on her part, but did anybody else catch that? I'm just curious. So while this whole thing is going on, we all, we cut, we cut to a lot of different things in this episode. We cut to Theon who is rescuing Yara. But then after that, he pretty much says that he's gonna join Jon again to fight with the living against the dead. Now this is where things get interesting between the meeting between Sam and Daenerys. So as you know, Daenerys burns Sam's parents alive. Sam finds out about it and he's not too happy about it. Which, you know, I would just say like, dude, you should be happy about it because yeah, he was your dad, but he was a dick. Like, and your brother literally was a dick. His name was Dickhard. So <laughs> I can't even say that name with a straight face. Dickhard. Like, okay. But obviously, this gives him the courage to go tell Jon Snow about his true heritage. And Jon took it a lot better than I thought he would. I mean, he wasn't like kind of like falling on the ground and saying like, oh my God, my dad lied. He was upset. Yeah, but I was expecting him to kind of like throw something or just kind of like sit back in disbelief. He just kind of took it his stride. It was just kind of like, okay. All right, that's cool, but uh, I am the servant of Daenerys, and I'm also having sex with her, and she's my aunt. Holy crap. Before that, we see that Bran is just kind of chilling outside, and he says he's waiting for an old friend, which brings us to our next uh, first time in a long while reunion. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But during this whole thing with Jon and Daenerys, him finding out his true heritage, Sam kind of hints that Daenerys probably might not be a great queen after all, which is very interesting because... It, it goes against everything we've been told throughout the show. Like, throughout the show, we've been told that Daenerys, time and time again, by different characters, that she would be a great queen, a just queen. Tyrion left his family to serve this just queen. So now to hear from Sam, probably one of the most truest characters in the show, that she might not be the best queen in this situation, then it kind of makes us go, wow, he might be right. Because at the end of the day, Jon did give up his crown in order to protect his people, which means that makes him a better king than anybody else, because who exactly would do it? And then he brings up the question is, would Daenerys do it? And that's a pretty good freaking question. She did burn two guys alive, who Tyrion told her not to do. So does that make her like her father and not a great queen? Like, can she come back from that? We don't know. So this is a very interesting development when Sam brings John his true heritage. Now, as we get into the end game of this episode, we see that Tormund and Beric Dondarrion have survived the giant zombie dragon attack, and they're pretty much at this castle of Lord Umber. I really have to look this up to really realize who it was, because while they're there, they see a kid it's kind of like nailed to the wall with this giant like spiral of arms or whatever. It turns out that is Lord Umber who's a kid. I forgot that the that kid appeared earlier in the episode when Jon told him to get more men. So that kind of makes me feel bad now that the Night King killed this kid. So then Tormund and Beric just pretty much say, hey, they got to get to Winterfell quick and warn them that the Night King is closer than they think. We cut back to Winterfell and we see this shadowy figure with a hood up. He arrives there and boom, it is Jaime Lannister. The first time we see him in this episode and he looks over to his left and there is Bran still waiting in the same damn spot. Now, again, these two haven't seen each other since like season one and he hasn't seen him more specifically since he pushed him out that window, therefore crippling him. The first thing I thought of was that meme with Homer Simpson when he went into the bushes. I'm pretty sure that's what Jamie wanted to do. But we all know that Jamie is going to tell them the news that Cersei is not planning to ally themselves with it, which is gonna make Tyrion feel pretty stupid because he believed it, but Jamie caught on and knew that she wasn't going to do it. You can tell a lot of people are just gonna look at Tyrion like, that's what I thought. Big news, big development, seeing Bran for the first time, has all this information, what's gonna happen in the next episode? It looks like the war is coming sooner than we thought, so we're gonna get five more episodes of 
battle with the White Walkers. I'm excited for it. So yeah, guys, if you've seen the Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 1 episode, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what type of stuff you guys are thinking is going to happen in the future. Uh, until then, guys, just know I'm a dude in this room talking to a camera. Love you. And I'm